Hi, it's Jake. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. So, by way of a bit of background to this episode, The Voluntary Life is about ideas for finding freedom in an unfree world, which really it means ideas that you can implement in your own life for finding freedom. And I'm doing this podcast because I'm really interested in these ideas and I want to have maximum freedom in my own life. So while I explore these ideas for myself, I'm making this podcast to also see what other ideas are out there and what I can learn from other people. And so far, you know, we've talked about really practical issues around achieving more freedom in your life, like entrepreneurship and investment and these kinds of things. But another thing that I'm really interested in exploring is psychological freedom. Um, You may also have had the experience, as I have, that one of the really important barriers to freedom in your life is not just the practical considerations, but also the barriers that you have to overcome in your own mind. And you can see that in other people as well. Um, You know, one of the things that stops people living life to the full is themselves and their own psychological barriers to freedom. And I'm really interested in exploring ideas uh, around, you know, overcoming psychological barriers to freedom. So I've been looking at what's out there and what's been written on this subject. And one of the things that I've found is a book um, by a psychologist, uh, quite a famous one, written in the 1940s. And the book is The Fear of Freedom by Eric Fromm. And this is a discussion about the ideas in that book. Um, it's a discussion with a couple of friends of mine. Heiko is a psychologist from Germany, and he knows a lot about um, the broader field of, of uh, psychology and about Eric Fromm. And David is an entrepreneur from Germany, and he's a friend of mine who also has read this book. So we're talking about the ideas in this book, and in particular how they might be useful um, in applying to our own lives today. What we found is that the book is an odd mixture between some quite boring stuff that we didn't really get a lot of use out of and some quite useful stuff. The boring stuff, in our experience, was really Fromm's chapters on the history of people's psychological relationship with freedom. He goes through you know, how people have viewed freedom and tried to escape from it, um, from the Reformation, through the rise of capitalism and so forth. And he has a kind of semi-Marxist take on all of that. And he also talks about the psychological basis of how people got involved in fascism in Germany, in the Nazi movement. You know, what was going on psychologically that led to people looking for, led to people supporting kind of dictatorship and uh, and fascism. I, I thought those were going to be really interesting chapters, but actually we didn't really get any mileage out of them and found them pretty dry. The bit that we did find useful and interesting is the explanation that Fromm has of the mechanisms of how people try and escape freedom or why people fear freedom in their own lives and what the psychological what is going on psychologically underneath that fear and that is sort of the bit of the book that is potentially useful uh, in uh, today as well so that's where we um, start the discussion on this uh, podcast i hope you enjoy the discussion and thanks so much for listening the bits that, that I found um, really interesting, and let me see if this is um, how you understood his idea as well, but as far as I get it, so basically the idea is um, for for reasons in childhood, and he doesn't necessarily go into parenting, he sort of does go into parenting a bit, but I don't know, for, let's just say for reasons in childhood, people take on various ideas about, or, or various um, difficulties with being authentically their true selves and then when you get to adulthood and you are um kind of uh you have all the possibilities of uh being an adult um having the responsibilities of an adult going out into the world and choosing your own uh, destiny uh, you're making your own decisions and taking responsibility for the consequences of your actions i think from's idea is that that itself is a huge psychological challenge because of what people have been left with from their childhoods and the the responsibility of being yourself 
taking responsibility for who you are and so forth. And, and even knowing yourself is so overwhelming that most people are looking for ways to avoid that, basically, to find a way in life um, to not have to face up to who they are and, 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 uh, and think about sort of uh, what, what it is that they truly want, um, not what others might want for them. And he goes through all these um, different mechanisms of um, escaping the reality of who you are and, and what uh, society you live in into, into fantasy. And the mechanisms are like, and we can sort of talk more about the, um, the, the mechanisms, but it's like authoritarianism, uh, sadism and masochism and uh, sort of destructive tendencies and so forth. And that the idea is that when these psychological attempts to escape reality are acted out by people, it provides a, a kind of political context for um, all of the horrors of statism and in, in terms of war and um, sort of persecution of uh, minorities and, and, and everything else. And the idea is that um, basically um, tyrannical leaders hook in to the needs of the individuals um, to avoid taking responsibility for themselves and provide a kind of fantasy fantasy release which which is 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 basically this is his explanation of um why it is that um people can become uh you know uh, wrapped up in uh, movements like fascism and so forth is that your is that your understanding of the of the sort of basic argument too david uh, yes exactly there are these two facets right from uh, these two ex aspects to freedom one is the that you have the ability to grow yourself and to get to more uh, individuation. And the other aspect is that you are uh, disconnected from your environments and uh, from, from the people around you and from, from the world around you. And people uh, experience that as so overwhelming, this disconnection, um, that uh, they flee from freedom in general. That's, uh, yeah, I understood it basically the same, I, I guess. Right, right. And I, I, I mean, I really appreciated some of the sort of uh, the aspects of that idea, because he's sort of saying that when you when you grow up um, and you start to reach, um, you start to leave childhood and reach adulthood and you take on a critical view of the of the family relationships and the, the even the broader social relationships around you, that, you know, it, what you're going to see is so um horrifying in some ways the way that people treat each other that um that it is a big challenge to you know in a sense to look that reality in the face and and actually live with it um uh, and so fantasy is a lot more um is a lot more appealing like i i thought it was interesting that he makes that he he i really appreciated his suggestion that um Neurotics. I mean, I think what he means by neurotics is that people who have like some severe um, behavioral uh, problems or uh, having severe mental uh, problems in dealing with their, their social environment. Um, he suggests that at least they have tried to save their individuality, right? Unfortunately, the way that they've done it is that they've gone off into a fantasy land because they can't cope um, with sort of the trauma that they've experienced but at least they know that they've been traumatized or maybe not they know but at least they are they're trying to um, at least it's registered right whereas the other types of of um of reactions to childhood trauma that he talks about are more like just becoming so dissociated and and lost in in becoming a kind of what he calls an automaton that um, people don't even know that they have uh, lost their individuality they think that they are being them, their true selves when really they're completely plugged into what other people um, uh, uh, tell them to be, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because they, they flee into conformity, right? And, right. And, mm. Right, exactly. And I mean, I, I think that, um, that the idea of fleeing into conformity um, because of the challenges of being 
uh, of accepting the reality of your of your life and of yourself and and so forth. I think it's a great idea. I did think that this what was a little unclear um, is why uh, like he he doesn't really at least i mean tell me if you got this differently and, and maybe maybe it's or maybe this is something that he's spoken about in other places too that you might know about heiko but he doesn't really put a clear responsibility on on uh, authoritarian um parenting he mentions authoritarian parenting but it was to me like the mechanism seems to me at least if this is the model the mechanism seems quite clear so you have a child that is subjected to authoritarianism and um for example sadism basically um and the child grows up only being aware of those that that way of of relating um to the authority figure of the parents they get the child then becomes an an adult goes out into the world and then you know seeks to replicate those types of relationships either by looking up to a an authoritarian leader or by sadistically looking down upon others that they can um you know that they can take out their their behavior on they're kind of programmed in to relationships being about uh dominance and submission right and that seems to me to to make a lot of sense but uh, but if you don't look at it in terms of as, as a result of parenting then it's just like well why are all these people f- sort of fleeing freedom and fleeing reality fleeing the 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 responsibility of being yourself and and and, and choosing your own destiny to look for a group identity and and all of that it just otherwise it's all a bit like what the hell happened you know yeah uh, i think you need to understand that um he was writing in the 40s and uh or isn't it isn't it uh it, i think it did come out in 1942 or 43 something like that yes it did yeah yeah and so i think i'm i have a huge respect for for from asking these questions at all because um he wanted to uh, to understand why uh, uh he he did uh, he didn't know a lot about psychoanalysis and so he understood something of the workings of the psyche of the individual and he knew something about uh, societal structures because he had been into um, marxism and and uh, society theories a lot and so he tried to uh, combine these two layers or levels of understanding of knowledge um, between the individual and the society and um the answer he came up was uh, it has to be something in the childhood, in the family. And I think um, he was one of the first to give this answer. And so this is, I think, the achievement that uh, that he um, has to be credited with. Um, but of course, the answer was, was a first answer, and it was not a very articulate and a very knowledgeable answer because he didn't know about trauma. Um, that's I I cannot remember that he talks about trauma at that time and uh, it's it was um, even F- Freud did not talk about it in that terms uh, that we think about it today uh, and so I think um, um, when you know something about psychology from a modern standpoint uh, Fromm's writing has to has to seem lacking because he didn't have this uh, knowledge that we have today. I think that's very fair. I think that's a very fair point. Absolutely. He was writing it in the 1940s. So from from that standpoint, um, I totally take on board what you're saying that, you know, if he's not exactly clear about trauma and and where it comes from, then, you know, at least fair enough. This is the the early, early days of of trying to understand these things. And I do think it's a great achievement to to talk about um, uh, to talk about the problems in society. Um, being rooted in psychological problems and those problems being rooted in the family I, I mean that is that is really cool even if he's not very clear about exactly the mechanism of parenting and how um, trauma uh, in childhood um, sort of works itself out I, I, t- I totally take on board what you're saying yeah and I think that's t- that's even today a modern message to say, hey, look at the family when we understand uh, types of, of, of uh, political structures and societies. Um, I mean, Lloyd Moss also tries to do that. And I mean, he's kind of an outsider. 
So it's not an it's not a very welcomed question, and it's not a very uh, rewarding um, line of inquiry. And so I think um, it. I found it very fascinating at, at the time when I read it, and I think it's pretty pretty modern and and uh, um, recent still. The kind the kind of question. Yeah, and in fact, um, now that you mention it, I my understanding is that the, the Lloyd de Maus and the whole sort of psychohistory movement has been really influenced by Fromm, right? That his, like, as far as I understand, these his writings sort of kicked off um, the psychohistory movement because Fromm was saying, let's try and understand fascism from a psychological perspective, what would be going on there and stuff. And, and although um, Lloyd de Maus and other people have moved on and, and now talk much more explicitly about child abuse as being the origin of, of, uh, of war and so forth, the fact that um, looking for psychological explanations of, of, of big just sort of destructive things happening in history, that, that sort of, as far as I understand, Fromm was one of the guys who really, really got that moving. Yeah, I don't know the, the link between Fromm and Lloyd de Maus, but I know that um, Fromm is, is um, um, uh, Lloyd de Maus has this concept of growth panic. That is when an unusual amount of freedom emerges in a society, then uh, people panic, and that's, of course, fear of freedom, what Freud, uh, Fromm talked about. And so there's this conceptual link, but I don't know um, if there was an actual link, uh, as you said, that may, may very well be, but I don't know about it. Right, right. Well, I mean, whether or not, uh, yeah, how that, I guess um, that's something that I'm sure the psychohistory guys will probably uh, probably written about somewhere. But, but just in terms of the ideas themselves, um, I, I was really impressed at, at, the, at the way that he describes these, these sort of um, escape mechanisms if you like or, or ways of trying to escape from freedom and some of them i think like sadism um the sadomasochism thing he describes it very well in terms of the way that if you are feeling sort of very very um overwhelmed by the sort of challenge of of being a true self person in in sort of one to one relationship with other with other people then being either the masochistic or sadistic um side of a power a sort of power relationship is much more familiar and um literally familiar in that sense and and gets kind of acted out as a way of avoiding um the the difficulty and the challenge of just being yourself i thought all well, that was um was really interesting and also thought the idea of destructiveness as a way of um avoiding the challenge of of accepting the reality of your life was interesting too because it's sort of as far as i understand it the idea is that destructiveness like the the urge to want to 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 destroy and kill and and uh, uh these things you know vandalize or whatever it is is a way of like if the world itself out there is so challenging um then you know the urge to destroy it is this almost like a self erasure as well because if you if you kind of if you can't deal with the world as it is then you can have the sort of splendid isolation of just trying to uh, destroy um, the things that you can't deal with. I mean, at least that's. I may, may, maybe I'm not explaining it very well, but like I think destructiveness in 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 terms of just acting out of anger is something that, on a simple level, I w- I sort of thought about it as well. It's just a lot of pent up pent up rage that wants to get that the person wants to get out on on something else. But actually, there's you know he sort of talks about it in a slightly more subtle way, and that it's also a way of avoiding having to deal with the world because you just want to go out there and destroy it instead. You know. And I guess that's sort of some of the the idea of this growth anxiety that ends up in, in destructiveness is maybe linked up with that. I would think so that um, this these are this is uh, describing exactly the same phenomenon. Um, what uh, Lloyd de Maus with growth, growth panic or growth anxiety meant. Yeah, I think if uh, if there's a challenge and you have never learned to deal with challenges that's kind of negotiating with reality you only learned either to be dominated or then in turn dominate yourself then uh, yeah this uh, masochistic or sadistic structure emerges or you even um, see finally uh, an occasion a possibility 
to act out the rage that you never dare to act out against your abuser. Right. If somebody somebody stings you or a challenge uh, uh, angers you, then all the destructiveness that would have been directed at the at the parent or the abuser now gets directed at, at a random aspect of society or the world. Right, an acceptable aspect in the sense that it, you know you can get group. Um... You can get uh, group approval for acting out rage and destructiveness on certain people. Yeah, you know, it's, that's what um, what uh, Lo Leute Mors, I, I don't know this exactly, but he talked about the, the bad mother and the good mother stuff. And when when uh, these alter alternate selves are activated, then they can be activated in other people who had the same history as well. And then you get this group phenomenon that everybody hates Jews or hates um, strangers or um, capitalism or whatever. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And the other thing that he talks about, which I really, which was I thought was really interesting, and in some ways um, more more subtle than the destructive or sadomasochist um, sort of escapes from freedom, was he talks about conformity. And I guess this maybe is one of the things that he was kind of maybe breaking a, a new ground with as well. Was like because he talks about the um, the the kind of uh, escape from freedom by looking to others. If if somebody out there in in whether that person is an authoritarian leader or or like is the cultural uh, uh, messages in 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 your sort of um, family and in the media and so forth. If there's messages out there to tell you what kind of person you are then you don't have to go through the um, sort of growth pain of, of, of actually working those things out yourself, right? You don't have to overcome the programming you received in, in childhood and actually work out who you truly are. You can, you can essentially just look to other people to, um, to provide that identity for you. But the kick is, the, the really interesting thing is that um, you don't even know that you're doing that. So the conformity is is unconscious and therefore if you if you discuss with um somebody uh, uh, um the conformity that they display they will consider that to be their true self and they would consider that to be um you know their their rational choice evaluated at length and you know come up they've they've they would they would consider that they have simply chosen these paths rather than actually realizing that what's happened is that they've been given a path and then they've they've come with a post rationalization to justify that in terms that seems to be um the, you know that seems to, that gives them the semblance of, of of their own identity now i'm sure that we all do this to to a greater or lesser extent right we all post rationalize decisions that we've made for maybe unconscious reasons but i guess what he's talking about is the level that that happens at and that in in, in some senses you can live your entire life like that right where every every decision is post rationalized but taken really for unconscious um reasons and uh, I mean that the sad thing is that that is the the sort of uh, psychological uh, level um, of most people um, who are alive today. I would say, and and that's you know that it's a it's a, it's kind of tough, but that's that's sort of where we're at, I guess, as a as a culture, as a society. I mean, what do you think? Yeah, I would. I would. I mean, from knowing about trauma, uh, I'm amazed how precisely and accurately he described the phenomenon. But when you know about trauma, then it makes all sense and it, it's clear that it cannot be otherwise. Because if you are traumatized, it's not that just something bad happens to you and you adjust to it. Um, in a traumatization, when you are attached to an attachment figure, like say your mother, um, you need to suppress the ugly reality that the person who is in charge of your caring and of your security is actually becoming the danger. This is a, a fact that uh, a child uh, younger than four year, years of age cannot process because it's too dangerous, it's too frightening. Right, right. So it need, it's, the child needs to, to put away the ugly reality that the mother is actually the, the source of the danger 
and needs to retain all the positive aspects of the mother because it's the only um, person who can provide security. Um, or, yeah, maybe there is no, no dad who helps. Uh, and then the child goes on living um, with just these positive aspects of the mother. That results in a, in a severe or mild idealization of the mother. And of course, um, also with the values and the uh, type of lifestyle that the mother or the, the, the respective um, attachment figure displays. And so people grow up and, and have just um, gotten accustomed to, the, to copying or, or inheriting the lifestyle of the parents, of their attachment figures. But all the cruel stuff, the, the traumatization, the uh, agony um, that is suppressed. And uh, if people are not looking back and, and facing up to these uh, ugly realities, then they just go on um, uh, with a certain part of their experience uh, being suppressed. And so it's a very natural, um, um, after we have been traumatized, it's a very natural progression of things that you just conform with uh, what everybody does. Yeah, because right, um, right. speaking up against something or going against the mainstream or what David uh, um, brought into this, uh, the discussion, that if you want to be free, then you need to separate. You need to, to take yourself apart from other people. And that's only a dangerous and frightening thing if you don't have parents or attachment figures in your life that um, are hostile towards your individuation. I mean, if you have loving parents, they have no problem with you being different and becoming uh, self-directing. And so it's, right. only, it's only if you, if you have been traumatized that this, um, this um, individuation in, in puberty or adolescence is such a big and huge challenge. And so it's only um, um, that, that all of society almost seems to live on, on um, conformity is only a, um, a sign of uh, how, ma how much uh, and how many people uh, are being traumatized in our society. Right. It's a sign of what the kind of parenting is in our society. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It's sad, but it's, uh, I think it's a reality. Everybody is traumatized. Yeah, yeah. There are differences in, in how much and how broadly, but um, there's nobody who's, who's, uh, who's left unscarred. Yeah. Mm. And I mean, you know, this is sort of like, obviously this is a huge, huge topic, but um, the other aspects that, that we've talked about on, on this podcast, on The Voluntary Life, about finding freedom in in your life in your personal life and in 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 the world as it is not in sort of long distant political solutions in the future but in your your life now you know we've talked about all these practical things like entrepreneurship and unjobbing and um unschooling and investment and these kinds of things but i mean for for people who are thinking about choosing their own way in life um about really making the most of the freedom that they have to live um, the life that they want, not the life that other people might want for them, but the life that they want, you know, there is this question of like, well, what is it that I really want? I mean, what, what's kind of been left over from the, you know, uh, the, the, the need that I had to conform to, you know, the parenting situation that I, that I was subjected to as a child, to my school, to the cultural messages around me, you know, obviously this is a huge, huge topic, but, you know, where, do you, where would you say that people um, coming to this fresh Heiko, I mean, where do you start? If you really want to, if you're thinking about, well, you know, what do I really want and how do I know if what I really want is truly what I want and not, you know, stuff that I'm, I feel I ought to want, so to speak? You know, what, what would you say? Uh, I know it's a big question, but what would you say to people who are, uh, are just coming to that question? Yeah, maybe I, I don't have a good answer for that, but maybe I can um, just take myself as an example. Um, I I was fortunate enough to to have left this 
um, this desire for knowing what's going on. And um, I mean, if you if you if you look at it logically, why should anybody have anxiety of freedom? I mean, freedom is a wonderful thing. Yeah, and, absolutely. Yeah, and young young children are not afraid of freedom. They just do what they want, and you need to you need to do something to them in order to make them afraid of freedom. And so, if I would say, if somebody comes new to this, I would I would just post them him or her the question: Why is it that you are anxious or afraid of freedom? I mean, that's a that's that's not that makes no sense. And then I think it's left up to the curiosity of the person uh, whether he or she uh, pursues the, the answer of, or, or wants to find an answer. And I wanted to find an answer, and I was lucky enough to find a teacher who offered a, a psychology uh, workshop uh, in the 13th grade, and he basically exposes to some, uh, um, um, how do you say that? Ideas or books or no no trainings or or skills or how do you say that? What's the German word? Um, Übungen. Uh, exercises. Yeah, some exercises. Ah, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Some exercises where you just uh, came into contact with your own feelings, and I was amazed how many feelings I didn't know. I didn't know I I had rage within me. I didn't know I had uh, um, hate within me, and so I think the the most uh, fruitful invest investment is if you really try to figure out why you are you afraid of freedom, or why are you, why do you have feelings that you don't understand why they are occurring, and so yeah, get just get into self knowledge, and if you know yourself more, then of course um, you will start um, digging into your history and and where, where this all comes from and. So that would be my recommendation. It worked for me, but it presupposes, of course, that you are curious enough to to want to have these answers. Yes, absolutely. You've got to want to know the answers to that. You've got to want to um, explore self-knowledge because it can be so confusing and uh, stressful and uh, and difficult and it can be tiring. And, you know, so you have to have that curiosity, I think, to actually want to 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 pursue more knowledge of yourself in a sense to be able to have freedom um f for for yourself but also from uh, some of the 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 sort of knots and tangles inside yourself that um that that may that may be there and so yeah i agree. i think that's a great answer heiko i think that's really helpful what what do you think david um yeah i, I yeah i agree i mean that's i think that's would be uh, to do these exercises would be the best start towards more freedom and acceptance of oneself. Absolutely. Um, did you have anything else that you were thinking about in terms of like interesting stuff to come out of the the book or or the the subject itself? Um, did is anything else come up for you guys that you thought um, you know either, as I say either from either from what From talks about or just from from this question. I think one aspect in the book uh, is very interesting that he describes uh, um, uh, the development of humankind as a as a journey towards more and more freedom and individuation, and um, and I think that's that's uh, I think that's really beautiful and that also makes me kind of hopeful. If this is um, if this is true that um, we will overcome, you know. Um, all the obstacles that we face uh, today um, towards more freedom and individuation in our society today. And I, I like that um, description very much. I like that very much too. And I think that is, um, that is possible. And that is, the, that is the potential. Like it's certainly true that, um, that we uh well for example parenting it has in in not everywhere but in certain places and certain parts of, of certain societies has got better and better um over the last uh you know 500 years or whatever um 
But I think it's the other thing, and maybe this is slightly to do with the the kind of Marxist um, or Hegelian view of history, that history is um, always moving forward on towards something. Maybe that this is something that from like uh, absorbed a bit because although I, I think that is really beautiful as well and is really possible, I don't think it's inevitable. And I mean, I, obviously it is possible for societies to go uh, backwards and to go into a full I guess this is what the whole the psychohistory guys are talking about you can have this wonderful flourishing of freedom and in terms of both people being able to be uh, self-individuate a lot more and pursue their own lifestyle choices and and innovate and change the way that we live come up with interesting new material um, uh, innovations and, and new social changes and like that this wonderful flourishing can occur and then when it does it sort of rings these alarm bells which end up in in uh, um you know allowing people to get sucked into the propaganda and the uh and the fantasy of nationalism and war and um class conflict and these types of things so Although I agree that it is um, a beautiful thing that the, the 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 progress that has been made, I think, is a beautiful thing, and the potential that that is there is also a beautiful thing. But it, I don't think it's uh, in any sense um, inevitable, which is why um, everybody who who does become more enlightened needs to uh, to absolutely make the most of their freedom and you know and live it to the full to show. Uh, to show others um, that that uh, that it's possible, you know. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty optimistic about the prospect of human development because I, I mean, when you look at the work that Lloyd Mars did, um, it's pretty impressive from from what kind of wretched um, uh, situations we evolved uh, from, and. Um, I think um, from uh, it dates himself um, by the by the way he de he explains uh, the fear of freedom. Um, I think if he would write today, um, it would it would have been quite different because um, I think today the idea is imaginable, which was not at in the in the nineteen forties. Um, the, the idea uh, is now imaginable that children grow up with loving parents, they care for them, there's a good attachment, um, there's no violence, there's a welcoming of the freedom of the kids and also a welcoming of the freedom of the parents, but it's negotiated between all, um, um, uh, all persons in the family. And so there is no, uh, there needs to be no generation conflict or puberty crisis and breakup of families when kids uh, become adult themselves. So I think um, the crisis that he uh, writes his book about, the fear of freedom, is not necessarily it does not necessarily have to occur, and it may not be the rule, and it may be rare, but it's an idea that is as, at least imaginable and there are people trying to do that and um, so that's what Lamar, uh, Lloyd de Mors talked about when he was um, uh, um, creating the, the concept of a child-centered um, parenting or uh, parenting supporting their children to become what they wanted uh, want to be themselves and this is an idea that I um, not quite find uh, within Fromm's writing. Writing, he uh, writes about this self-actualization and the um, individuation and the creativity, and he writes about love. And so there is the the kernel of this concept is in his writings. But it was a world where he could almost not imagine that um, the fear of freedom um, was an anomaly and not a regular phenomenon. And I think I can imagine a world where the fear of freedom 
will be an anomaly, uh, a symptom of psychological dysfunction and not a normal phenomenon. Yeah. Right, right, absolutely. I, I, I think that's a great point. And in, in many ways, you know, the issue, um, the issue that I guess he wasn't um, sort of so conscious of himself is that the way to get there is is not necessarily just through self you know expressing your own freedom in 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 your own life but most importantly um through raising children in a way that is uh non non violent non aggressive and and respectful of their freedom you know as you say i guess the the great thing that that has happened in terms of kind of slowly slowly evolving ideas about um child uh, about um uh, family life and and uh, and parenting is that you know you can have um a a negotiated relationship with um with kids where yes you know there is security but they have the opportunity to explore from a secure base you know their their own um freedom and come back when they want to and and you know all of these kinds of negotiation that things like the parent effectiveness um uh, stuff talks about you know the the ways of of having win-win negotiations all that stuff is I guess the way that um, you know that generation by generation, people people will um, there is I can um, see 